Hi, Tom. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm a full-time singer-songwriter slash producer. Um, and yeah, but really that's what I spend my time doing. So I guess there's different facets of what I do. Like I'm a live performer um, and I perform at, um, you know, one aspect of it is, is high performance. Like I'm performing behind material that I've written or like the writings. Um, you know, at functions and feasts and holy days and, and really using music in that context. And then also, um, I guess I create what you would call more secular music, more music that's personal and about, you know, like really inspired by my life and the story of, of my search, really. Um, so I guess that exists in a, in, a, in a different sphere, you know, like and I guess the spheres are kind of merged in some way, but that... You know, like I perform at weddings and I perform at, at, at functions, corporate functions. And then also, um, yeah, I guess my music and my content is played by a, a, a sort of broad audience online through Spotify and streaming services. And um, yeah, and I guess I'm also interested in, in, in the use of arts in a, in a broader context and community building and, and, and how do we use music uh, as a, yeah, as a, as a tool for really building capacity for, for serving the faith and teaching the faith and um, and really, yeah, that's, that's kind of it in a sort of nutshell. Have you always wanted to be a musician? So my journey to becoming a musician really started in my 20s. I was probably like 22, 23. Uh, I come from a musical background, both, both on my mother and father's side. Like both they, they play music and their parents played music. So there's a musical, I guess, pedigree or history there. But um, I found my way to it really through, through other jobs, you know, and through, and through really realizing uh, what I didn't want to do, you know, like, and really music just kind of emerged in the early 20s. Uh, I started playing guitar and um, started playing with songwriting. And, and then um, it really started to sort of come through in a really strong way at that point. And that sort of, at that time, it was an indication that I needed to really let go of other things in my life. And, and it was this, um, this sort of progression for me was really this calling was to head into music and to, and to, to do it full time. So what advice would you give to others who wish to explore their creative potential? There's a lot of them, you know, like I guess music and life are very much intertwined, but I guess in the musical context, some of the major lessons that I think I've learned is to overcome procrastination, um, to really, to, to not be too self-critical. I think artists and musicians are really plagued by self-criticism, you know, is this good enough? Are people going to like this? You know, is, is this going to have an outlet? You know, is, is it going to be appreciated? Um, so I think it's really important. It's been a really important lesson for me to to get to that point of of you know creating a piece of art and then letting it go and and completing it. You know, like I think a lot of people get to a point, you know, in the process and they either either through fear or um, you know like uh, yeah like not a, I don't want to say a lack of perseverance but. Um, there's something that hinders them from really releasing, you know, and, and, from, and from following that process through. And it's often sort of fear-based. Am I, is this good enough? Is it worthy? And so that's certainly a major lesson is, um, is really just perseverance and not letting perfectionism uh, prevent you from, from releasing art and creating art. That's been one of the major lessons. Um, and another lesson would be, I guess, reliance, like really in this context of, of, art and the Baha'i faith, um, really relying upon the assistance, you know, like a Baha'u'llah and, and to, yeah, to step forth with courage, you know, when the Baha'i says, as you have faith, so shall your powers and blessings be, you know, it's a really powerful quotation to reflect upon when you, when you, as an artist, I think, you know, there's really this assistance available to us in whatever, you know, artistic form we're pursuing, if it's visual arts or music. Um, you know, sculpting and writing, there's a, this aspect of imagination, you know, and, and inspiration, these things that come to us. Um, and so I think this is a huge, huge part of it. And it also enables you to remove the ego. This is not something that I, I am responsible for and I have created, you know, like, and it's less associated with the self and it's more uh, viewed as, you know, as a channel, like you become a channel for something else. And I think that enables you to have a form of detachment, a level of detachment, and, um, or at least you work towards that and to approach the art with humility, you know, like, and that you, that you have a craft and skills that you hone, but uh, there's also a 
big as big part of it is it's mysterious. There's a big mysterious element to it um, that that really encourages humility. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the role of the arts in the Baha'i faith? The role of the you know music and the arts in the faith. I guess it's a broad, really broad topic, you know, and it's a really, I think it's something that we're just beginning to learn more about. Um, and so there's a quotation that I've been reflecting on a lot recently, and it was from the Universal House of Justice, and when they talked about um, the graceful integration of the arts. So I think we, we have, you know, a culture at the moment where, you know, sometimes the arts are seen as separate from community life. You know, there's a performance, like an individual does a performance. And, um, you know, and so I think we're just beginning to, to understand and to um, really build this capacity for, you know, a coherent expression of the arts in, in all these different spaces, as opposed to it being sort of, you know, like, yeah, there's a performance and people listen and then, you know, and they go away. Really, I think we're starting to see this emergent culture of the arts being used in all spaces, you know, like in, in the neighborhoods, in the community building, and at feast and at, at conferences, and, and that it's actually a force for like opening up the spirits, you know, like opening up our hearts of so this ladder, this idea of it being a ladder for the soul. I think we're beginning to, to really learn about um, what this really means and, and to actually integrate it into our community life um, in a, yeah, in, in a graceful way, like in a way that is, um, that's really coherent. And I think um, there's just such a great power in that, like, you know, even though the Guardian says like at this stage, we don't have Baha'i music, you know, we don't have Baha'i art. But um, there's so many quotations about the importance of the arts and that really um, the arts have a power to express the spirit of the faith that, that really uh, transcends words. You know, we have like quotations from Abdu Baha and Baha'u'llah where they talk about um, that the amplification that music has, that when you sing a prayer instead of just, you know, when you chant it instead of just saying it, it has this this incredibly this this greatly increased effect. So I think we're really just beginning to understand what that is, and 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 the, and the power of prayer um, and music, and sorry, the power of music and the arts and community life. So how has the Baha'i faith impacted your journey as an artist? Yeah, well, that journey, uh, I guess, of exp expressing the arts and music, it's been yeah, a really wonderful and I guess really really humbling one. Um, and, you know, there's the, the quotation from Abdu Baha, uh, it was in a letter to, um, to Mark Toby, who was a fantastic Baha'i artist, and where he says, you know, when you, when you grasp the paintbrush, it's as if you're in the temple, you know. So this idea of um, the expression of the arts and music uh, being a form of worship, I just think is this profound kind of bounty that we have in the faith that as artists, we can you know, express this name, this name of God, the fashion that we can actually come close and express this, this name of God, this name of God. Um, it's just an incredible gift, I think, and an incredible bounty. And um, yeah, I guess the, for me, it's been a very, uh, it's been a very, I guess, intuitive journey. I guess it's a very mysterious journey for me, this, this process of the creating of art. And I think when we align ourselves, when I've, you know, when I've aligned myself um, more closely with the writings and the and the you know like the exhortations and the the guidance on the arts, um, it's really just incredibly humbling I think and I, I feel like when you're aligning yourself with the faith and using the arts in that way, um, it's amazing how the doors open and how things flow you know like it's really um, it's really like so many experiences of. of you know, you, ha you have an intention to create art or like a project that is based around Baha'i inspired content. And uh, you just tend to meet the right people. You know, you, re you meet the right musicians, the right engineers, you find the right spaces. Um, and I think anything that's aligned with service to the faith is really, um, the doors are just opened, you know, like, and I think that's just such a bounty. And really when I started off my journey of being a, a Baha'i artist, there was a quotation from Baha'u'llah where he says, you know, true reliance is for the seeker to pursue his profession and calling in this world and to hold fast unto the Lord and to seek naught but his grace. Um, and so this is something that I really read and reread a lot at the start of that journey um, because I think it just throws light on the fact that we, we do have a calling. Like each of us has, has a purpose and has been given a certain set of skills and talents 
to use in this world. <clears throat> and when, when they really find their expression and service to the faith, it's really just a, like a magical thing. It's a really a beautiful experience to have that, that cohesion uh, and that coherence. Um, and I think it's a really important thing to, to keep in mind because sometimes the, the, the choices we make in our lives you know, can be to do with fear. Like, I, I want money, I want career, I want this, I want this kind of security. Um, and whereas really our calling could be something else, you know, we've been given talents in a certain sphere and maybe it is the arts, you know, and I think um, it's really important for that to be encouraged in people. You know, if, if people have those talents and those skills, um, for us as community members and friends and as parents to see those talents and to actually encourage them and draw them out, you know, like and to create a culture in the Baha'i community that that nurtures those talents, you know, like and that opens up avenues for service and avenues for actually, you know, sharing those talents, um, you know, like and that's material advances in that sphere as well as spiritual advances and a deepening of, of understanding. What do you hope people will take away from your music? You know, I guess I really just leave that up to them. It's not something I give, I give too much thought to. Um, like I'm very conscious as, a, as an artist of the process through which I create music. I feel like that's really important. Um, like the intention that you have in the creation of art and, and, and how that it actually happens, you know, that, that you're approaching it in like a prayerful way and that you're actually reliant upon Bahá'u'lláh and um, that, that at, at all these points along the way you're, you're really conscious of, of, of how you're creating it. And I think when you have that in mind, I think it just takes care of itself, you know, like and people will respond to it, um, you know, how they will. And I think, you know, for myself, that's how I respond to, to music. I can, I can feel when it's been... It's been done in a way that is um, that, that the process has been, you know, before has been carried out with intention, um, and in this case, you know, when it's really imbued with a spiritual approach and a spiritual intention, <clears throat> um, the fruits really, I think, will take care of themselves. And I think when you when you have at the heart of what you're doing, you know, like a a spirit of devotion and a consciousness of service. I think it, it, it really does, you know, like infuse the, 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 the process with that spirit.